Unlock the secret to lush gardens and vibrant plants. Today we dive into the art and science of pruning, a game changer for your garden's health and aesthetics. Often overlooked, pruning is the unsung hero of gardening, not merely a maintenance task but a vital process that influences a plant's growth, shape, and overall health. It's a blend of art and science, a skill that can take your garden from good to great, so, stay with us as we reveal professional tips and techniques that will elevate your gardening game. Pruning isn't just cutting, it's guiding your plants to thrive. Have you ever wondered why some gardens seem to burst with life while others struggle to keep pace? The secret often lies in the subtle art of pruning. Now, pruning is a term that might intimidate some, but let's break it down. Picture a plant. As it grows, it sprouts branches and leaves in all directions. It's a natural, wild process. But sometimes this unchecked growth can lead to problems. Branches might compete for sunlight, leaves might overcrowd each other, and pests might find cozy homes in the dense foliage. That's where pruning comes in. Pruning is like a plant's personal fitness coach, guiding it towards healthier, more beautiful growth. It involves carefully removing certain parts of a plant, like branches, buds, or roots, to improve its overall health and aesthetics. Pruning helps in multiple ways. First, it promotes plant health. By cutting away dead or diseased parts, we prevent infections from spreading. Pruning also helps control pests and diseases that love hiding in dense, unpruned plants. Second, it encourages better growth. Imagine a plant as a city with a limited supply of resources. By pruning, we're directing these resources to where they're most needed, like new buds and branches. Third, pruning enhances the plant's form and structure. It's like sculpting with living material, shaping the plant for optimal beauty and balance. And finally, for fruiting and flowering plants, pruning can boost yields and blooms. It's a way to tell the plant, hey, focus your energy on making more fruits and flowers. But remember, Pruning is not a one-size-fits-all solution. Different plants have different needs, and the timing, technique, and intensity of pruning can vary. It's a delicate dance between nature and nurture, a balance we learn with time and practice. Guiding your plants to thrive is an art and science, and it starts with understanding pruning. So let's roll up our sleeves and dive deeper into the tools and techniques that make pruning a game-changer for your garden. Choosing the right tool is the first step to effective pruning. Now let's talk about the tools of the trade. Pruning is a craft and like any craft, it requires the right tools. Think of these as your gardening paintbrushes, each with a specific role to play. First off, shears. These are your go-to for most pruning jobs. They're perfect for snipping off smaller branches and twigs, shaping your plants and keeping them in check. Next up, loppers. These are like shears but with longer handles and stronger blades. They're your best friends when it comes to tackling thicker branches that shears can't handle. And finally, saws. These are for the heavy-duty work, for those thick, stubborn branches that neither shears nor loppers can conquer. Choosing the right tool isn't just about effectiveness. It's also about safety. Always ensure your tools are sharp and in good condition to prevent accidents and ensure clean cuts. Remember, clean cuts heal faster and are less likely to cause disease. With the right tools in hand, you're ready to start pruning. Now that you have the tools, let's dive into the techniques. Pruning may seem straightforward, but it's an art form in itself, requiring specific methods to achieve the best results. Today, we'll cover five key techniques that will help your plants thrive. First up is thinning out. This technique is all about improving air circulation and light penetration. By selectively removing branches, particularly those that are crossing or growing inwards, we allow the plant to breathe and spread out naturally. It's like giving your plant room to stretch its arms. The result? A healthier plant with fewer diseases and pests. Next, we have deadheading. This technique involves removing spent flowers to encourage new blooms. By cutting off the old, we're telling the plant to stop using energy there and focus on creating something fresh and vibrant. It's a little nudge that can lead to a gorgeous flush of new flowers. The third technique is shaping. This is where aesthetics and health meet. By carefully pruning your shrubs and trees, you can guide their growth into pleasing shapes. Not only does this enhance the visual appeal of your garden, but it also promotes balanced growth and prevents overcrowding. Our fourth technique is cutting back. Sometimes branches can become too long or overgrown, shading out lower parts of the plant or even other plants in your garden. By cutting these back, we stimulate growth lower down, creating a denser, bushier plant. It's a bold move but it can breathe new life into an old plant. Lastly, we delve into seasonal pruning. Different plants have different pruning times. Spring bloomers are best pruned just after they flower, while summer bloomers prefer a winter prune. 
Knowing when to prune is as important as knowing how. It's like timing your move perfectly in a dance. Now let's look at some transformations. Thinning out an overgrown shrub can turn it from a tangled mess into a graceful feature. Deadheading a rosebush can lead to a second, even a third flush of blooms. Shaping a boxwood shrub can turn it into a living sculpture. Cutting back an old apple tree can stimulate it to produce more fruit. Seasonal pruning can ensure a plant is always at its best, whether it's a spring flowering azalea or a summer blooming hydrangea. With these techniques, you can guide your plants to grow and thrive in the way you want. Each cut is a conversation, a chance to shape the future of your garden. And the best part, you're in control. So pick up those pruning shears and let's get to work. Avoid common mistakes and learn the tricks that make a difference. With those words in mind, let's delve into the world of pruning do's and don'ts. First off, do prune during the plant's dormant season. This is typically in late winter or early spring. Pruning during this time allows plants to focus on strong new growth when the growing season begins. Do remember to sanitize your tools. This can't be stressed enough. Dirty tools can spread disease from one plant to another. A quick wipe with rubbing alcohol after each use can make a world of difference. Do make your cuts at a 45 degree angle. This encourages water runoff, reducing the chance of disease and rot. Now, on to the don'ts. Don't prune too much at once. A good rule of thumb is to never remove more than one-third of the plant at a time. Over pruning can stress the plant and stunt its growth. Don't ignore the weather. Pruning on a wet day can spread disease. So, check the forecast before you start. Don't cut too close to the bud. Leave about a quarter inch. Cutting too close can damage the bud and hinder new growth. And lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you're unsure about anything, reach out to a local gardening center or look up information online. Remember these do's and don'ts when you start your pruning journey. With these in mind, you're well on your way to creating a thriving, beautiful garden. Pruning can truly transform your garden and we've got the proof. Let's dive into some real-life success stories. First up, meet Jane, a home gardener who struggled with overgrown shrubs. After learning about thinning cuts, Jane pruned her way to a garden that's as vibrant as it is well-ventilated. Then, there's Mark, a garden enthusiast who discovered the art of deadheading. Once he started removing spent flowers, his rose bushes bloomed like never before, painting his garden with a riot of colors. And who can forget Sarah? She used shaping techniques to turn her unruly boxwood into a topiary masterpiece, becoming the talk of her neighborhood. Finally, we have Tom, who mastered seasonal pruning and transformed his fruit trees into high-yielding powerhouses. These success stories show the transformative power of pruning. With the knowledge you've gained today, Imagine what you can achieve in your own garden. Today, we've unlocked the potential lying dormant in your garden. We've delved into the transformative art of pruning, understood its importance for plant health, and learned about essential tools and techniques. We've also covered the do's and don'ts of pruning and witnessed real-life success stories. Now it's your turn to apply these pro tips and bring your plants to a new level of growth and beauty. Inspired to reshape your garden? Share your pruning success stories in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more gardening wisdom.